All right, we're back with another video here on Pro Tabletop. We're going to be doing some more tier list breakdown, but this time we're going into the individual factions. This first video is going to be on Space Marines, but before we get into it, make sure you subscribe, turn on that bell so you get the notifications of when all of our videos go live. And like always, I'm joined by the one and the only and the two and the four, because the one and the only would only be one person. So it's Damian and Thomas, you know them uh, it, from all the other videos. And what we're going to do right now to kind of break this down is we are going to be now, now, now let, let's set this pre, this precedence real quick. Two things. If you don't have a codex, you're not going to have a video. Okay. <laughs> it's that simple. If games workshop doesn't care about the army enough to give them their own book, we don't care enough to make a video on it. Show me a codex. I'll make a video on it for you. Sorry for all those people that don't have codexes. <laughs> Uh, there was a lot of there was a lot of internet hate about some of those quick chaos factions and other factions that, that, that not listed on there. Like, where's my Alpha Legion? Where's my yeah. Iron Warrior? Sorry, that that is um, way, yeah, we, that is way too difficult. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going down the list of codexes, so that's how that list got created. But so we're excited today. I'm excited and uh, a little bit you know intimidated by what we're going to plan to do. We're going to break down these uh, codexes, started with Space Marines. Um, by these different categories. So, like, Brad, why don't we talk about these categories yep. and what we're talking what those mean? Yeah, so so if you didn't see our tier list videos, we basically went over kind of... Go how, back and watch them, number one. Yeah, so go back and watch them, but we went over how we're how we ranking everything. And now that's just like a super rough baseline, and it will get adjusted as ninth goes on. And now what we want to do is we want to look at every single faction a little bit more in depth. And by doing that, we've got these six, we're just going to call them stats to make it easy. I don't know what else to call them. Um, so you've got defense, which is basically how durable and survivable people are. Do they have mobility as defense? Um, offensive are they mobile to move around the board and you know get to things and kill them fast what is their kill power for shooting in close combat uh, primary objectives in ninth edition how easily can they score the objectives and how easily can they deny the objectives from their opponents secondary objectives same thing how easily can they score them or deny them are is it really hard for them to like decide what secondaries am i going to take uh, CP farm, that's going to basically be like, how much CP are they starting with? Like, do they eat a bunch of CP in the beginning? So they're starting with very little. Do they rely on strats? So once you're out of CP, you know, they become way less good. Um, can they gain CP back? Anything like that ha that has to do with CP and stratagems and stuff. How does it make them good? How does it make them bad? And then list flexibility. Are you just playing this meta list? Is there one list and they can only be played with one list? Or is there tons of different options that they can be played around to form to the meta, get ahead of the meta, create the meta? Um, so that's kind of how we're going to be ranking these. So this is one that's going to be on Space Marines because we want to really get a baseline. And then what you'll see in all the other videos is um, we're going to compare a lot of stuff to the Space Marines. So this is going to be our baseline. This is going to be, um, what's it called in science? Um, I don't know what it is. Like when you have... Uh, Dang, what's it called? <laughs> uh, I, I know what you're trying to. I know yeah. what you're trying to think of. I can't quite get it out here. Oh no, I don't know what the word is. Well, you have oh. this. You have a. You have a thing to compare everything else to. I can't remember what it's called. I'll figure it out eventually. Um, so when we look at Space Marines, guys, we look at their defense. So durability, mobility, survivability, everything like that, as defensive as Space Marines can be. Where are they where are they falling? I'm gonna start dragging stuff up here as you guys talk. Yeah, so we're scaling at nine to uh, one to ten, to ten, right? So yep. ten is the, the best. One is one is the least, or zero is the least, I guess. And you know, our original tier list was kind of our gut check, just kind of off our, our off the cuff, what we kind of thought based on our playing experience in our this early be, early. It could be our it could be our route. This is our yeah. route. This could be completely different, right? When we come out here and we get some numerical kind of analytics. Um, that might change how we feel about it. But Marines, I mean, I feel they're pretty durable. I mean, you got the three plus save, you got lots of options for two plus save. You got invulnerable saves everywhere. Um, we have options for fill no pains, um, bringing guys back. Um, you know, they're pretty, they pretty much have it all. So uh, high armor, high toughness, and high mobility in different units. So, and high, high wound count on a lot of these new models too. Yep. Yeah, so, so I mean, I'm talking about yeah, seven or eights on these. Yeah, guys. I was thinking, I was thinking an eight because I really think the only thing that gets above them is like 
I'm just going to say Death Guard because they start off with full Feel No Pains like on everything. So I think if your whole army has Feel No Pains or even like Iron Hands, right, they're probably more durable Space Marines. So I think that um, not having a built-in Feel No Pain would, would be really the only thing that ticks me down from them. Um, or like Custodes where they're T5 instead of T4. They're probably a little more durable, right? So I think because a lot of the stuff is like the baseline T4, um, that would truck it down a point for me and then not having built in feel no pains would truck it down otherwise i think that they have enough tools to just get up to eight points super easy that's my thought yeah i think so too uh so offensive so killing for shooting for combat we know that they have very yeah similar. they check all the boxes now can they you do. get them all on one list you know that's all dependent on what you're doing but uh, they can they can slice and dice it any way you want. They got really high mobility. They can shoot you off the board. They can fight you off the board. You're putting at ten? I'm just putting it there until we decide. Oh, okay. So right now, what is that? That's a ten. That's right ten. There? That's a ten. That's a tenner. So what brings them? Uh, what brings them down from a ten? What do they lack? Because that's going to be easier for this, I think. What yeah. brings them down from a ten that they are not killy enough? So. It's a good question. It is a good question. You got you got grab bombs. You've got last cannons out the wazoo. You've got dreadnoughts, eradicators. You but, got everything to kill tanks. You got everything to kill hordes. You got everything to do combat. You, really you got do. all the characters. You okay. got lots of psychics. I mean, you you really have everything. Now, again, so, this okay. is not a kind of combination yeah. of can I get it all in one list. It's that, really just and that's he said it right there. So that's why you lose it. So Psych they can't fit it all. They can't fit in all they lists, and they do not have full psychic builds i think that that is a big offensive thing they they can they can build they have some psychic right with mortal wound output but the armies that are like these full mortal wound outputs i think that's that's an offensive thing we have to look at and say like they're not as strong as as other armies on the the pure psychic mortal wound output yeah that's fair that's fair all right, all right. All right. that makes Down sense to me um so primary. So scoring objectives, the nine objectives, holding objectives. Yeah, primary is pretty tough because, you know, they got some great troops. They got a lot of different troop options. And having to both. use those assets. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, I mean, and their their troop units can do work, right? Some units are throwing units, but uh, Marines got a lot of good troops that can just like I four deploy. I'm on the objective. You know, I'm hard to shift because I'm in armor. I got cover. You know, like they're they're really high on the primary. The, the problem the problem is though that you're having to use those use those assets to be able to hold the objective and that might not always let them do their job right they, so because you're limited on what resources you have because everything is good more or less let's just right. say it like that then you're having to use those everything that are good and then they're like oh i need to kill this thing with his eradicators but primary is more important so because yeah. of my lack of amount of stuff i just have to use them to do this because primary wins right yeah, so it's, so it's, it's, like they, they have the less units. they have less units you have less units in a space marine list typically so it's harder to use those units to hold the primary so that's going to tick them down yeah i call them my like work units right like yeah you want guys doing work and then uh Marines are so expensive, you and know, for what you're boom. getting. That's you're like, exactly what I was just going to say next. Expensive. Yeah, I got to sit a guy, a big expensive unit in the back to hold this objective. I right. need him out there to work. So that's right. a little bit of it. And I think that that would tick them down in my mind is their troop choices for obsec are expensive troop choices, except for yeah. scouts. But then scouts are not as durable. So it's kind of in the same thing as you either have these non-durable units that you're going to throw away, or you have these expensive units that are then going to maybe not do what you need them to do. And you have to now spend points in your list building to kind of, you know, weigh that out or whatever. I, I, I almost think you pull them down to a seven, to be honest. I think a seven. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that might just have to do with depending on how you're building the list and stuff, how fast they can get on the objectives. Does it take them multiple turns? One thing that Thomas has struggled with with Space Marines, and this will probably be why it should be a seven, is they struggle on the missions for holding two more than the ones holding one. That's right. So when you and those, look at the missions, missions like are that, prevalent. It's it's yeah. it's very hard. Um, yeah, there's more than half, right? So we were talking about those missions where it's like hold two objectives to get five points, hold three to get yeah. ten points. Yeah. And the Marines trying to spread your, your your army out to cover that many objectives, it can start to get pretty tricky. 
Yep. You start spreading your force a little bit too much away from all your buffs. So <laughs> when you look at secondaries with them, and all the ones that are in the book, um, you know, all the psychic ones are pretty much out the window. Um, honestly, I would say those are out the window for a lot of armies. Um, which, how much do they actually struggle getting secondaries and stuff like that, right? Like, to me, it feels like they can get and engage on the front most of the times. They do have the ability to do, like, raise the banners or... Why do you think they can get engaged in all front pretty easily? Uh, I mean, you got bikes. They got bikes. And now with the Outriders, you can put Outriders in there with strategic reserves. Uh, I think that engage on all fronts is something that 99%, if not 100% of armies should be able to get four out of five turns max points. Ju literally just because of strategic reserves. So I don't, I don't think that that's ever going to be a hard choice. And I think Space Marines have a lot more tools than some other armies to really be able to get that. I mean, you look at land speeders, you look at bikes. Um, they're not expensive units that you can just throw up the board and get, you know, engage on all fronts. Um, so they also do very well with while we fight, we stand. The units that are typically higher in points that are single model units are dreadnoughts or like an executioner or something like that or gilliman, right? They're, yes, they're some characters that are like embedded yeah, in a bunch of dudes that yeah. are hard to get to. Which are really hard um, to kill. So if you build your list correctly, you should be able mm -hmm. to take that with three characters and basically guarantee yourself 15 points there. Um, denying secondaries, they might be a little bit harder to for them to deny people's secondaries. Um, like if you have a faster army, it's going to be harder for you to, to deny them engage on all fronts or to you know, take certain things away from them, depending on what the deployment is. If they pick something where they need to be in your deployments, you're now forced to spread your force apart with smaller units. Um, so now they start to struggle with that while trying to get their secondaries and their primaries. So now that you're spreading their forces thin even more. So um, what other ones are they going to struggle at? So you're struggling on psychic ones. You're struggling on potentially some board control ones. You're struggling on denying your opponent if they're a faster army that has a lot of board control um i think seven is good you think seven what do you think thomas you play them all the i time. mean yeah i play them all the time and i struggle there's always the third uh, you know i pick two relatively easy but that third one i think and that's kind of the point everyone so you think it goes down to like six then or five because it has to do with the mobility right like i think most of the secondaries you want to be very mobile kind of to brad's point like you really want to be very mobile and in my mind i'm always like well i need that unit to do work i need that unit to kill something i need it to be here on this objective and now i gotta like i gotta shove them into this quarter just to get a point or i have to you know run over here and get the point scramblers right so yeah. it's, it's units that are specifically made for those objectives so it's it, i struggle with secondaries on that <laughs> And that's one of those things, too, where if the, it is a unit that specifically has to go get a secondary, then they might be giving up the killing, right? Or they might be giving up a primary or whatever it is because right. you don't have as many units. Um, so secondaries right. seem to be pretty hard for the just normal space marines, and they might be easier for certain factions or certain list builds. This is just in general. Um, so CP farm. One thing that I've noticed is space marines typically start with a lot of CP, especially if you have, like, Gilliman in your list and stuff like that. Um, but then you have the they options. They blow it, though. Yeah, the options have to blow so it. Right? many stratagems that they can spend a lot, right? So I think they definitely use a lot of command points. Um, and they, they benefit from a lot of command points, and then their power can be pretty diminished. I think there's some builds who are not super reliant on it, but like CPs really can make Space Marines go. And when it runs out, it starts to peter out. So. So would we say that they're in the middle of the road where like you have the option to build something that's CP heavy, you have the option that's not, you're probably going to start off with in between that 8 and 10 CP um, range based on pregame spends and what your list is looking like. Uh, you can spend it on a lot of stratagems or not, but if you do, you're not necessarily out of the game, right? If Once you're at zero CP, you're not out of the game by any means. It just, it gives you a leg up in those first few turns when you're able to blow it. Right. Yeah, I, I would rate them pretty high. Like you think higher? You know, yeah, I think so. So you think so they you think that they're high on this, even though they're going to be blowing CP and stuff like that potentially in the start. So 
I, I like them being high just because they have a lot of flexibility in how they spend the CP and they, they have ways to get more CP back. Like they have a lot of different options to get. Now they have a lot of options to spend it too, right? So, I mean, I guess it kind of balances out. So maybe they do drop down a little bit. They're kind of middle of the road. Yeah. I'd say about six. I think that's probably fair. Uh, and Lick's flexibility. Lick's flexibility, like, I don't I mean, know how I don't put this at a 10. I don't know how you don't either. Because you can let her do anything with them. They have so many units and so many things. You can build all sorts of different builds and them all be good. Yeah. If anybody has list flexibility, it's it's Marines, right? Like, yep. let's let's yep. be real. Um, so how do we how do we feel about this overall? Do we think it's too high, too low? Because we're looking at. I mean, I think it's a, I think it's going to be a, a very high baseline for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. But let's see. What's the total here? So we've got. Uh, 10, 10 what, 16, so 24. Those are eight. That's, at 40, that's at 47. So what I've done is we've kind of done this then. So that's at, that's honestly, it's, that's probably it's it's pretty much where, it's we, probably where we have. So that that's 47 points, which is putting them right in that A tier. I feel good about that because we don't think they're S or S plus. Um, right. Yep. There's going to be very few units that are going to be better up in this S and S plus tier. So the Marines are falling in that A tier. Uh, we're going to go on to the next faction. We're going to just kind of pick what we think will be super high or super low on there and see where they fall. Let us know in the comments below where you guys think Space Marines fall and where you think you know we rated them wrong or where you agree or disagree. Uh, obviously, we're just trying this out. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe, do all the fun things, and we'll see you on the next video.